Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 in Tech. I'm Carlos Casanova. We're here at Knowledge 17 with my co-host Shane Carlson. Hello. And Walker White from uh, from BDNA. Hi, Carlos, welcome, how are you? welcome. And I know we've had you on before, and mm -hmm. it's uh, great to see you guys back again. I'm sure, there's been a lot of uh, progress. Um, for some of the folks that maybe aren't that familiar with BDNA, you know, give us a little bit of background on you know what you guys do and where you um, where you've come from, because obviously there's a been great advancements in the last uh, last few years. Sure, absolutely, uh, and we appreciate the opportunity to be on here today. Uh, so BDNA is essentially a data platform. We basically take the, uh, for, well the first thing we do is we create a catalog of every piece of hardware and software that's ever been released, every version, every edition, so we're tracking about two million uh, hardware and software products, wow. and also about 180 million so uh, m pieces of market data, like the end of life dates for things, and. Uh, dimensions for hardware, so we track all that stuff in a catalog, a reference catalog, and then we create a data platform that takes in raw data and translates it to that to that kind of common language, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then we feed that data, <coughs> excuse me, into various systems like ServiceNow or HP or other tools that need to consume high fidelity inventory information about hardware and software. And ultimately, you know, decisions are things that people make when the data they are presented fails to make the choice obvious. So we're in the business of making the choice obvious with far better data right. to drive all sorts of IT processes and projects. So what makes BDNA uh, unique compared to some of the other players in the market space uh, that, that focus kind of on that asset data, asset quality sort of world? Right, absolutely. So. Uh, a lot of, it, BDNA is a horizontal solution chain. So uh, where you've got, um, uh, if you're in, for example, uh, software license optimization, you might clean up data specifically for the task of software license optimization. If you're in enterprise architecture or IT planning, you might be cleaning up data just for that use case. BDNA, but eventually what's going to happen is those two silos of data are going to need to talk to one another, right, and then you've got to have to do that job all over Absolutely. again, right? Absolutely. Right. So BDNA looks at this problem differently. We go all the way to the source of the data and try to separate the tactical collection of data from the strategic use of data. So I can take in data from virtually any source, translate it to this language, Technopedia, and then feed it into all these downstream systems. And it removes an enormous amount of friction across cross-functional uh, solutions as well. So what does that mean to the customers at the end of the day who, who subscribe to, to BDNA? You know, what does that help them do? Right, so uh, basically we help to uh, accelerate the implementation of, you know, whether it's asset management, whether it is, um, uh, whether it's asset management, IT procurement, um, and IT planning, portfolio management, anything that has a need for high fidelity data to drive the process. Yeah. Second thing is it lowers operational costs substantially because each of these silos in the business is doing some portion of this. You know, there's a spreadsheet involved, or there's data that needs to be cleansed in the configuration management database, and we just get ahead of that, you know, upstream of that problem. So, you know, speeding the, speeding the time to value, lowering implementation cost, and frankly, by enriching this data with information that they can't get your hands yeah. on, like end of life dates, you can make better decisions, right? So, I drop, uh, you know, how many pieces of software do I have out there that are past end of life? Right, that type of question is like yeah. that's a that's a very valuable question to get an answer yeah. to. And and I guess um, that kind of leads me into a question like end of life type things that might have security implications. Oh yeah, so, absolutely. So how does that you know especially in this day and age with right. you know with IoT which I, I definitely want to come back to, you know how does that enable making maybe closing vulnerabilities or enabling more uh, uh, more stable security posture right so uh, it, it helps security immensely as, as you know the um, there's a there's a data breach report published by Verizon every year 99 percent and more of <laughs> and vulnerabilities. Like, How much more? we're going to see 110 percent <laughs> right, right, right exactly 99 pl percent plus vulnerabilities come through end of life software right. yeah. meaning that software that's past its obsolescence state or past end of life people so have stopped patching and right you, you stop just patching leaving. exactly you yeah. just left that lying around. So security tools are, are looking at the attack surface of the organization yeah. typically, and they're very, very good at that. Right. You know, we're, we're, not, we're not that tool. However, what BDNA can do is it can look at an entire, an entire inventory of an entire enterprise. It can normalize all that stuff to Technopedia, and then we can tack on to that, that end of life date so we can say, look, across your entire enterprise, here is the 45% of software that has passed its its initial support stage, or even you know the 35% that's passed its obsolescence phase. Right. Now, the great thing is it's like you don't have to do anything about it, but at least you understand it's like the it's knowing how big the hurricane cone is, right? right. And if I'm outside the cone, fine. Yeah. If I'm on the bullseye of it right now, I probably want to know that. Right. Yeah. Right. So so to to like I said, I wanted to come back to the IoT, IoT cloud and various right. other things. 
are, are changing how we do business, obviously the digital transformation stuff. So given that everything is really based on data, mm -hmm. right, and we know the old model of data, information, knowledge, wisdom, right? Right. Um, how does how does BDNA enable that? Because I envision you know, a huge potential there in right. enabling that maturity growth. Right. Well, we've already moved into, into that space uh, somewhat substantially in some areas, but um, if you think about what BDNA does, and we apply that exact same problem to the medical device space or the Internet of Things space or facilities, just peel the onion of IT one layer and say, okay, what are these guys trying to do with medical devices in a hospital? Well, I got to bring them in, I got to get them installed, I got to maintain them, I got to move them, I got to you know get rid of them. It, they're basically doing asset management, yep. and these devices are more and more every day. Basically, IT devices first, and then put in the hands of a doctor making it a medical device. So BDNA has already started to take what we have done in the IT space, and we are applying it already to medical devices. And our customers are having us go into the facility space. You know, HVAC systems, sensors, card readers. You know, all that other junk that's in their environment. And so it's not a huge leap to think, okay, now we want to go to Internet of Things and all the devices and sensors. First and foremost in all that task is what is out there right. and because the volume of data is going to go up even higher when we get into IoT, I've got to, I've got to abstract that problem. I've got to create a common language and then a platform to align things to. Right. So we're, we're hot on that trail. Earlier you mentioned lowering costs is a, is a big value point for your customers. Where are those costs coming from? Is that coming from reallocation of existing assets? Is that coming from managing software license costs? Where do your customers typically see those lowered costs it, from? So the, it, it depends where they're kind of most interested in using mm -hmm. the data initially, right? If it's software asset management, sure, they'll use our data for software asset management. If it's roadmap, you know, it could be in that. It could also be <clears throat> saving cost in just manual, right? I've got, I've got guys that are cleaning up data for us, and I'm going to eliminate that cost immediately. Okay. Hard cost removals there. Um, and then the other cost that our customers are now start to document for us is once I've got if you use BDNA data in one silo in the business, you'll get value X. Yep. If I use it in two silos, though, I don't get X plus X. I get X plus X plus another half, right? Okay. Because of the friction that is removed from the business of being like, hey, you're calling it this and I'm calling it this, so we're agreeing to things, right? Okay. Reasonable people presented with the same information tend not to disagree. But we spent yep. an enormous Reasonable amount of people. time. Yeah. <laughs> we spent an enormous <laughs> amount of time in <laughs> IT basically debating over the data, and yeah. we completely lose the plot about why are we getting this data. Yeah. People don't buy our solution because they want better data. They're trying to do Just things do with job. the data, yeah. Yeah. and they track the problem back to data. Right, and that's and that's the reality of it, right? Most, in my experience, is it's not that they're opposed to it, but it's like, I've, I've massaged it, I've customized it to fit my need. Right. So yeah. it's not even that I disagree with it, but right. that's going to change how I have to operate now. A absolutely, and, <clears throat> and every time it's done in a silo, right, th there's bias applied to yeah. data, right? You know, BDNA doesn't care, it's a machine, right? Yeah. It does the same thing the same way every single yeah. time, right? Yeah. And it doesn't worry about, well, if there are more of these, am I going to, you know, is Johnny going to lose his job? Yeah, and, you know. Your mo most consistent team player, huh? Right, mo very <laughs> consistent team player, Excellent. right? Just hammer Excellent. it out. I sometimes think, uh, you know, if you remember Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs, right? Yeah. That should yeah. be our spokesman, right? Perfect. This is a mind-numbing job, but somebody's got to do it. We're the dirty jobs of IT. Excellent. Well, on that note, on dirty jobs, I guess we'll leave <laughs> the hard work of uh, cleaning up all that data. <laughs> all right, thank Excellent. you. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. It.